Hello friends and everyone, welcome back to this exciting course on logging traces in your synchronous microservices using Open Telemetry, one of the most powerful tools for distributed tracing in modern systems. In this course, I'll walk you through how to trace and monitor your microservices not only to the console but also to Honeycomb, an external service tailored for managing traces in distributed systems. The question is, why tracing is so important? You know, in today's world of microservices, having visibility into how your services communicate with one another is crucial. Whether it is a simple API call or it's a complex transaction spanning multiple services, tracing helps you diagnose performance bottlenecks, identify latency issues, and quickly debug problems in production. There are a lot of packages that can help you achieve this, but the question is, why choose Open Telemetry? You know, Open Telemetry is an open source and vendor neutral observability framework that allows you to collect traces, metrics, and log from your applications. It is also widely supported and integrates easily with popular tools like Honeycomb, Grafana, and Jaga. It is also designed to standardize the observability framework meaning you get more flexibility in switching vendors or adopting new technologies without reworking your entire login setup it supports a lot of languages uh, as part of um, integration .NET 2 is part of these languages and if a package is widely used it means there's always support for that so when you are stuck you can have your way out. That is the reason why I introduced Open Telemetry in logging uh, tracing in your distributed system. You know, we have asynchronous microservice, so that's asynchronous communication in microservice, and also have synchronous. But why did I choose synchronous microservices? You know, in this course, we focus on synchronous microservices most, which means one service waits for the response of another before Continuing, understanding and tracing these types of microservices is vital because they rely heavily on direct API calls and any latency in one service can cause a cascading delay across others. Synchronous services are often more prone to issues like timeout, making trace logging essential for tracking where and why failures occur. So this course has a lot for you. We'll be creating two projects in our solution, Product API and Other API. That is what I've been using in projects or in courses. So with this, we're going to make an HTTP call from an API, Other API to Product API, purposely to get product data before populating Other Summary. And after that, we're going to integrate this open telemetry while we watch the traces, of the services being happening so let's get started now make sure you have your visual studio in 2022 or higher installed launch it now let's first add solution we're going to be adding two projects that is a product api and our other api so we'll click on create a new project and we're going to choose blank solution let me give it a name so maybe demo and I would say synchronous microservices. So I'm going to say that tracing is synchronous microservices. All right, then choose a location for this project. Click on create to create the solution. Now we have solution. Let's go and add the project. Let's add other API as well. Since we want to focus on the tracing or integrating open telemetry, 
We want to actually get connected to our database easily by using the feature introduced that is a scat folded version. So let's use this feature to create um, um, the controller and everything for us. But before we do that, we make sure we add a model. So let's right click on product API and let's add a product model. So give it a name and the name that I'm going to give here that is product. So within this product, let me have my ID. That is what normally I do. <laughs> so I have my ID here. I have my product name. Then I have my product price. So that is a product information or product data that I need. If I click on product, now go to add and select new scat folded item. In here, you make sure you go in for an API. You choose API controller with action using the EF call. Click on add. And let's use our model, which is product. DB contest, we have none. So we're going to create one. And now with this, this is going to be product, not API, product DB context. So add it. Now for database, there are two options. You can decide to use any other database at all. Here, we're going to be using an SQL and it's an SQL Lite. We have an SQL Server and SQL Lite. Now, with Open Telemetry has a package which supports SQL Lite. That's an no, that's an SQL Server, and now within that, it gives you the detailed information about the database when you use an SQL Server. When you use an SQL Lite, you do not actually have a full information about the database. So we're going to be trying the both. Okay, in here, let's use an SQL Server. Then we can install the SQL Lite package as well. So give it a name to the controller and in here I'm going to say product controller. Click on add and that is what we need. So let's wait while it downloads this package and scat fold um, this setup for us. All right, so this feature is done and you can see we have a controller created automatically for us. That is a product controller. So we can move this straight to the controller's folder. Okay. So when you open that, you have a product DB context. And now with this DB context, we need to include namespace. So it's coming from the application. That is an other API. Okay, okay, okay. So this should be here instead. I think I've moved from product to other, right? Where should it be that? This should come from the other API. So that's the product API. Let's delete from the other. Okay. So this is our context. We have our product DB context specified. We have a connection string in the app setting.json. So with this. Let me uh, modify this to suit my own. And for the database, this is demo. Same product DB. Let's remove all this. So from that, we can modify this. So trust server certificate. Set this to true. Okay, so I think we are good. When you go to program.cs file, we have it specified in here. And that is it. Use an SQL server. Now from our controller. Let's make sure it is fixed. So products. 
so the namespace all right so let's make sure you put that controller and do you have a product controller we have it appeared here so it means we need to move this out and i think the issue is gone so we can rebuild solution to make sure everything is intact So that is done. Let's go and add migration. So you make sure you set the product API as a default or as a startup project. And here with the default project, you make sure you do same. So you can see we have product API and I product API. In here, let's add migration. Give it any name at all. After creating the file, we're going to update it. So we, we wait. Now update database. So we have our database and table created. So we have a controller also created, so we can go ahead and now test this. And check it up so when you check our you can see we have our product api here we can go ahead and add update or perform crowd on product so you can do same test it up and see if all is set now execute this All right, so you can see that it is done. So it tells you that we, we, we are able to connect to the database. We have our data being inserted. Great. Let's go and do same to the product. So let's close this. Now we're going to close our product API and I go to the other API. So from the solution, let's close this node. Open the other API. In here, let's create our model. So that to be an order model. Now with this order, what do we need? We need, since we're going to be saving it, we need an ID. So from that, we have the product ID. Product ID that you want to order. Then we have quantity. So this is quantity. Let's also do same to what we've done. We did to the product API. So right click on other API, then go to add new scat folded item. You're going to choose an API, card endpoint, add, choose your DB context. So your model is an other model. DB context we don't have, so let's create new one. And which will be other DB context. SQL, that's what you need. Other controller. Add. Now let's wait for this to do same as it did in the product API. Alright, this is also done. So you can cross check and confirm. So from our, our program.cs file, there's our connection string registered under DB context. From app settings, let's modify it as well. So then we'll sync other DB, that is my database name. Then trust that connection to true. And here change to trust. Server certificates. Set also to true. Save this. The next thing to do is let's rebuild this and add migration. That is also done. So you make sure you put up your package manager console, set the product API as startup, set same as default, then add migration, update database,
so that is done now let's go and run this let's try and make an order we have product id of one quantity 10 click on execute this should save in a database let's check it out and yep we have it so you can see we have an id of one product id and now the quantity that we uh, provided okay so our product api and our other api are working now the next thing that we're going to be doing here is we're going to integrate this open telemetry and log the um, traces to the console after that we learn how we can integrate the honey cup that is an external um, site that we can push our log to so let's see let's close this go to solution explorer now in the product other api before we integrate the honeycomb or the open telemetry we need to get an other summary we need to make a request to the product api and get a product info when we provide the id of that specific product so we can get product name and quantity right so in this case let's add a model to the other api and let's say here this is other summary now with this other summary we need our id that is an other id we need product id then we need product name Should be string, then we need product price, we need ordered quantity, and last one we need total amount. Now we can go ahead and set this straight forward. So that is product price multiplied by the ordered quantity. That gives you the total amount. Okay. Let's go to our controller and let's add one method. So other controller, let's push this controller to the other controller to controller's folder. So in here, let's make sure we extract this. Then we can say that here it is private async task. We're taking a list of which comes out with a list of products. So that is an order. So we say get uh, orders. Now we can call this method here. So return OK. With the response of this okay so we're going to have a method that is http get we call this a summary so let's have our async task I action results 
then get summary so let's get others let's call this others method to get us this others after that let's create a list Let's loop through the others that we have. So before we add this, this is what we're going to be doing. We want to call this product API. Uh, one of its product controller that is a get product by ID. We want to specify the product ID and then get a product data before we populate this other summary. So this should be the others, this one. So we're going to say that summary, or oh, that is this list dot add. So we're going to have new other summary. And in here, let's go and populate this. So we have ordered ID. This added ID. I think, yeah, the mistake here, right? You need to update it. We can use that. So let's go back to this other controller. And on this here, we can say it is this other dot ID. We have product ID and it is coming from this other dot product ID. We have um, price. So this product price, where can we get it from? We can get it from an API call. So let's integrate, inject our HTTP client. Now, once you make a call, once you loop through, you want to make a call to the API and then get the specific product um, data based on the ID that we're going to provide. So we're going to say that results, or let's have with product. So I wait, we have our client dot get from JSON async. And now here we need to provide this product model. So we could have added uh, a class, a C sharp class library, and we move all these models in there. So we need not to create it again because we have it already. But since we did not do that, let's go to our product API and copy the product itself, come to the other API and paste it here. You make sure you change the name from product to order. Then in the controller, you can see it has added already. Then let's go and get the address of this API. Go to properties, then launch settings. Let's grab the HTTPS. So we copy this. Let's go back to our other controller. And then it is last API and then product. We need to pass an ID. And here we need to pass an order dot product ID. Okay, so after we have the product information, we can go ahead and say product.price. Then we have our product name, product.name. Okay, 
these are the properties we need to provide values to. So after that, you want to return this list. So return this list. But it is not just list. You can return OK with the list. So since we are using primary constructor, we cannot be using the traditional one. So let's grab this and add it here so we can remove this. Okay, so now that we have this set, let's go to the other API program.cs file. Let's add HTTP service. To add a client, let's rebuild project. So let's try this. So let's go in there and set configure starter project. You want to start both projects. So we have added product already. So let's push this to one side. And now when we come to the other, we've already made an order, isn't it? So when we click on get this, let's see, we have to get an order that we have made. Okay, so there's an order that we, we made. Now let's go and get other summary. And here it's going to connect to the other API. And I'll get info about that specific data or product before returning a summary to us. Let's wait and see what they're going to have a product name, price, quantity, and the price, and the total amount as well. Okay, so when we check, yes, we have everything. We have total amount, we have price, but quantity, we don't have quantity. Let's check from our other controller. So we did not provide quantity. Okay. I think this solves the problem. All right. So let's say we have this set. Everything is working. Now let's go and introduce delay here. So this, let's have a wait. We're going to be using this uh, reintroduction delay based on because of the open telemetry that we want to integrate and now check the, the trace. Okay, so let's await tax the delay. We can delay here five seconds. Let's save this now from our product API. Products API. Let's go to the controller, solution, product, API, and our controller. Let's also do same to the get product by ID, this. Let's introduce delay. We can make this maybe um, six, six seconds to be okay for this. So we have a huge delay, okay. So when we run this again, we might see the time it takes to get data when you click on summary. So when we try the summary again, now there's a huge delay. Let's wait and see the number of times it's going to take to execute this method. So you can see we have the data all right, but it took us about 11.94 seconds to get this done yes because of the delay that we introduced all right so let's close this and let's integrate the open telemetry so we need to install packages now let's we need to integrate this in both project so we can have access to um 
or issues going on within the two projects. So let's first tackle with the other API. So right click on dependencies, manage to get packages. So search for open telemetry. and install this so once you have this installed in we need to also install exporter.console that will enable us to see everything in the console So if you want to log to the console, you need this package. Let's also install supportive protocol. So that is an optelemetry.exporter.open telemetry protocol. Install this package as well. Let's install the hosting. Now let's install the instrumentation. So we have three instrumentations that you're going to be installing. The first one is the ASP.NET call. That is when you have access to a database, an internal process that is going to handle that. We have the HTTP for an external service. Then we have an SQL client when you have an SQL um, database integrated. So dot HTTP and for SQL client, make sure you include pre release. If you don't do that, you're not going to have it because it is in the release. Uh, mode I think 1.9.0 is a beta dot one so you can see from here you need to make sure you check it before you search for that you saw this as well all right so to verify the package is being installed so let's say from our other API these are the packages now, since you have saved in our product, I'm going to grab all this. Then I'll go to the product. Maybe, maybe I can unload this. Then from the unload, I'll just paste it. Save and I reload. That's a smart way to skip copying or I'm installing them <laughs> one after the other again. Now let's rebuild our project. So let's go to our product API. Now in there we check our program.cs file. And in here there are quite a few things that we need to do to get this done. Let's first create our service name. So service name, since this is the product API, the service name is going to be a product API. So I'm going to have constant. It's a string, then service name. So this is product API service. Then do you want to provide version? This is a starting one, so normally I'll set up to 1.0.0. Now let's go and add the service. So we say builder.services.addOpenTelemetry. Then in here, 
we're going to say configure resource now with this resource let's specify an option to that now resource dot add service name so let's add service now this service provide the name this is going to be used to group um, this your tracing in your honeycomb as well also in the console we can we can also add the version if possible then once you have this we are not done <laughs> let's go and add with tracing so you can see we have with login with metrics with tracing we want to focus today on tracing now with tracing in that we need an, to provide an option as well so we say tracing now with this tracing we can have access to tracing dot then add asp.net core instrumentation i think let me put this in a new line then dot add you know we install three packages we also have an HTTP client implementation to handle all http calls and lastly we have dot add sql client now sql client is also going to handle all communications or information to a database using the sql okay now after we are done with that let's put this in the console so we're going to say dot add console exporter and that is all so this will enable us to log our trace to the console let's terminate this that is all you need to do it's quite simple so once you are done with this let's show, save this let's run since we integrated into the product let's run only the product while this runs make sure you check for your console as well so i have the console opening and as you can see as soon as the page loads and we have our swagger all swagger information activities has been recorded and are shown here you can just go through and that is a trace so when you start from here that is the initial um, setup and we have it open in a local host for 7161 and that is our api product api as often as we have our activity record in here and the first time here we have a display name as get the kind here it is client being recorded and here it is getting from our swagger so here these are default setups that we see because you haven't performed any activity yet this is coming from our swagger and the system itself so that's where we have this so because we have an endpoint swagger index.html and we have all this specified okay so that is the trace information for this now we're going to make a call to maybe this let's put this one here product so let's get our product and see the trace okay so we haven't it's here let's wait yeah so you see we have this a trace now i want to check here before the operation performed we are calling this our service name that we provided that is a version and check up here from our db we have our database right so check it out this is our database mysql this is a database name isn't it and we have it as say the server as local this is our service name version then when you come here that is where we make an the select this is coming from the ef core when you jump again you are going to the telemetry um, trace this is the duration that it took to perform this task it was get that's the http verb the endpoint or the route was api slash product there is a server there is a port you see so you can see we are getting the detailed information as soon as you click on the button we are getting everything from here 
you can do same to the other ones let's say from our post let's add another one here so this is product 2 there's a price click on execute this and let's wait so this is done now check it up so on a check here let's first see what happened you know we are having our post and this is our route isn't it we have our server in here that is the time that it took we have the same thing so you can read the same information that's a trace as soon as you make any endpoint call you have everything and we are having my sql server information um as well okay so this is our product api service great now let's go and integrate same to our other api so i'm going to grab this then let's go to our other api where is the other api go to program.cs file and in here let's paste this after pasting we need to include this namespaces well we have this using being added automatically this is not product this is rather an other api so let's change to other api that is all that we need to do let's go and also run this other api so right click on this order then let's start we can start with that debugging since we know it is working perfectly and let's make sure we have our console put up that is the other console and this our product console okay Now, you see, as soon as the other uh, API is out, we have this information given to us defaultly as we saw in the product API. There's a the swagger information. Okay, now let's make this. Let's also get same order. Let's see the trees from here. And you can see that it got connected to mysql this is our demo sync order db so you can see here we have database name specified the server even here we have our service order api service same as what you've seen aside from that we have the method display name we have our kind as a server we have the duration that it took so in case this endpoint delays you can check it out from here we have the verb right we have our route we have our port specified and we have our status code so this 200 minutes was successful we have it also set up here all right so this is working now let's click on get summary and see what happens so execute this now let's make sure We execute so now this is going to get connected or going to, going to get called to the product api and i'll get info and i return isn't it so let's see what will happen so here we are getting the information great let's go here and check it out so we started from here so we get this is we have a database specified in here now when you come to the first tax it made a call to api product you see that is this one and it was the source name here was system.net.http meaning it made an http call it was get it took almost six seconds because we specified a delay of six seconds the type was get that is a route 7161 is a the um, port 
and it is in the API product and now the ID that we specified was one. So that's a product ID. This is a status code. We have our service name in here or the API service. So once you have this, we went ahead and unpopulated the current one which is coming from this get other API and summary. And like we see from here, this also get. It's coming from a server and we have the service name, the version, and we also have the status code. You see, so the number when you make a call, whereby this call is so going to make another call, all the following calls um, info are going to be logged in there. So you can see, you can trace it and I'll see whether it was successful or it was in the time that it took to process it to make a call to each service. You're going to see it in there as you've seen here. But I know at times reading from here becomes uh, tedious. That is the reason why there's a nice UI that you can log this to. And now when you log it in there, you can see everything clear. And this is interesting. That is a honeycomb. So honeycomb, I think um, you need to subscribe, but it has a free version for testing. So we can, we are using the testing here. When you test it and you're okay with it, then you proceed to get the the extra ones okay <laughs> so let's see now in other let me open browser here so all that you should do is to put up your browser and then go to honeycomb.io honeycomb.io now when you come here you know start for free so you can start for free then start for free in here you can just log in now just follow to create an account. I have mine already created. So I just log in with my account. So I have a set here already. As soon as you log in, you're going to have a dashboard like this. And it tells you that waiting for you to send data to this. Now, when you come here, what should you do? You need an API key. It will give it to you automatically. So all that you're going to do is just copy this API key. Now, the reason why we're saying that this is neutral or flexible that you see it has a lot of language that I support. But here we are tackling this.net. And even with that, it has given you the instruction to follow. So whether it's in the Python, Java, Ruby, Go, whatever, you can integrate or use this to um, log your traces from your application. Let's concentrate or focus on the .NET because that is what we are doing. Okay, so once you're done with this, it means you're ready to go. Let's close this. And actually, I'm not closing, I'm minimizing. Let me make sure I have copied my key. So get a key here. I don't want you to see, that is why it's hidden like this. <laughs> okay now let's go to the service and in here in order for us to integrate this honey cup we need to install the package so we'll go to solution now let's install this package to each of the projects so let's stop this let's right click on dependencies go to manage new get packages then in here another browse tab you Make sure you have honeycomb.opentelemetry. So let's install that. So click on install. Then apply. Okay. So we have this installed. We need to do same to the other API. Okay. So go to the product API. Manage get packages and a browse tab and now paste same. Accept it. That is all. So we have this. Now let's go and integrate it. So in a program.cs file for each, we're going to add it. So come to after you've had this add console exporter 
let's add the configuration for that before we do that we need to add otlp exporter so in here let's say dot add otlp exporter after adding this exporter then let's go and add this honey cup you see we have it here right now this honey cup let's specify some configurations and within that we are saying that c dot service name we have service name and service version so that is service name we have service version also so we can use this service version the next one is we have c dot we need to provide an api key so your key kindly paste your key here then the next one we have the data set and here what is this data set that you want to use maybe this is test okay this is i'm just testing all right so this is what we basically need to make this run let's copy this save go to the other program file for the other project and now add it so we have same thing here now make sure you paste your key and let's run it so i have mine already i'm going to paste it in here offline and i run it so you see what's going to happen so once i have pasted mine and saved the project let's start this now we make sure our honeycomb ui is open like this and we have this notification waiting for you to send data so let's wait and check it up now while this is running we also check our honeycup for our test data so as soon as we run this you can see we you see notification from here data being received and now automatically it's going to start populating our logs for s so let's wait so we have auditor tests we have our other api service product api service so these are the two services that we created since we have two apis these are the services that we created for now we have only the default one so when you click on run query we have only default for the swagger and when you go to traces let's wait and see so these are the traces default traces for swagger we haven't made any call yet okay so let's go to our endpoint let's say this is other api and now from here let's click on try this out now this is going to make a call to the other endpoint and i get the time and populate it and make sure it's going to also delay from six seconds in that and then five seconds here so let's click on execute So that is done. We have our data here. Let's go and check it up. We need to rerun this query. Yeah, I can see we have some um, info in here, right? But we can check it from here. I think here gives us more um, clear view than <laughs> this one. So you can see from here we have there is a root name, get API, there is a verb, and we have a route API, order, and under summary right this is the duration that it took so if you want to view the information click on this trace id which is going to open it for you to see everything okay so you can see from here there is a trace we call this route now this route this is a database so it got to this database that is a other api not the other db to prepare stuff for us yes it, it did after from that it's supposed to get a uh, data from this product api so it went in and i got it and now here the this api to has its own database known as a demo sync product db and we are aware of that this is the time that it took now when you check here it took 13 seconds from the product api and i want to say from product api 
from our summary that is uh the main other api that is a 13.72726 so you can see that the delay is, is coming from the product api and we are aware of it because we issued a delay of six seconds right so that's the reason why it's delaying if you want to go beyond this check up here we have for other api service that is a service name and you can expand also this to see everything that is a time uh, stamp this is a duration in milliseconds and here you have all the info here there is a the verb that is get so the first one was the 200 status code is successful there is a route api order summary there is a library name and when you check here get api order summary we have the windows version the windows that i am operating on everything is set up in here and we also have the service or the server that's a local host that is a port this is a service name that is a version so you see that we can read every bit of information from that call from start to finish you can see everything here and it has even given you a visualizer that you can check that is this graph that you can actually look from so the time to easily get it trace has everything for you you can come in and now get in here now let's say we have a status code of 200 minutes working if i decide to shut down the other api so that's a product api okay now product api is no more working let's go and make sure we start only the other api and make an http call because you know other api needs to communicate with the product api to get the product detail isn't it while the product api is not live this error let's see what is going to log it into um our open telemetry or this honeycomb ui for us you know we are not checking the error and we are not uh, logging the error ourselves it's going to be done automatically for us and that is a good thing about this open telemetry connected to external ui as honeycomb so let's see get this other summary and we must have an error here saying the machine refuses it because it's not live yeah so we have it here no connection could be made because the target machine refuses it let's check our um the ui and here let's run query running to get the current one because we have a new thing coming in right check it up so we have this trace id the same order and let's click on the id to view detail and see it it took 18.22224 <laughs> second okay so it got this other service it got connected to the database of so this working but when it got to the product api it couldn't so it means the second service is not responding when you check the previous one we saw the responding service here with the database but here we are not so it tells you that there's an issue connecting to that check it from here this is the error type request exception it is coming from the type of http the status code is 500 i hope you can see that and there's a route you and i know so when you have an issue it locks it as well and when you check the tracing you can see which service is not responding and quickly you can just react to it this is a very simple system because here we have only two apis communicating so it is very easy for you to know that okay a and b or a is not working or b is not working but when you have multiple services connected together and you have an issue with one it becomes difficult for you to know which one is coming from so in this as soon as you have this trace here with this honeycomb ui you can easily pinpoint and know which one is causing the issue then quickly you rush and solve that so congratulations on completing this course you've now mastered the essential of 
tracing synchronous microservices using open telemetry and honeycomb we've covered how to log and trace http calls monitor your microservices performance and set up an external monitoring with honeycomb to ensure our systems are running smoothly with these skills you can now effectively track down bottlenecks debug issues quickly and then gain real time insight into the health of your microservices whether you are scaling up or optimizing your system, distributed tracing is now in your toolkit to help you build more resilient and reliable applications. I hope you enjoyed this course. If you find this valuable, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with others who could benefit from these powerful techniques. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.